Hello, and welcome back to this edition of the workbook for students <laughs> in the Course in Miracles, where I am Tomas. And today we've arrived at lesson 236. I rule my mind, which I alone must rule. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I rule my mind, which I alone must rule. All right, feeling in control today? I mean, maybe you are, that, which is totally cool. Let's talk about what we mean by this. I rule my mind, which I alone must rule. Well, first of all, let's take that first part, I rule my mind. Doesn't always feel that way, right? I mean, with our minds running rampant, absolutely rampant, as they so often do, with random thoughts that seem to come out of nowhere, well, in fact, they do come out of nowhere, yeah, in the end, they seem unrelated to each other, they could seem completely wild, crazy, random, or fixated. And we can fixate on particular things. Usually it's something that we're worried about or concerned about. We could fixate on condemning someone to a fiery hell for what they did or are doing or may do to us. We could fixate, we could be really random. Often it seems like we have no control over our own mind. Yet we're instructed again and again, and again here, right, in lesson 236, that we are in control. And we alone, the second part of the statement, must rule it. Nobody else is going to rule your mind. If you give power to someone else to tell you what to do, you are the one giving the power. Don't put it off on them. You gave your power away. This is something the ego doesn't want us to admit because the ego is always trying, as we know, to project blame, to project responsibility outside of itself, outside of you. Ego wants you to blame somebody else for your plight in life, for your situation. It's someone else's fault. In fact, it's not. Spirituality, as we routinely see, is all about taking ownership. It's all about accepting responsibility for everything, literally everything, our entire experience. So while it may seem like our mind has control of us and is running amok, we actually are the ones that must control it. As we see here in lesson 236, a mind can only serve. And it serves the purpose that you give it. You're that powerful. We all are, yeah. It serves the purpose that you assign to it. If you give it over to the Holy Spirit, if you give it over to God, to love, to your guides, all of it, 100% serves that purpose. So what purpose, this is our question, in this world, isn't it? It's to what purpose are we devoting our mind? To what are we giving it? And again, there are two and only two possible solutions to this. There's one solution, there's two options, let me say. We can give it over to 
illusion, projection, blame, suffering, or we can give it over to truth. We can give it to love, or we can give it to fear, we can give it to God, we can give it to the ego. That is, as I continue to repeat, and every teacher of this course continues to repeat, and in different words, every spiritual teacher in the world continues to repeat, this is the choice that we have to make. We make it right now in the present moment, love or fear. And if you elect not to choose, if you defer, so to speak, that's still a choice. And incidentally, if you have two options when you choose, deferring is not choosing for love, by the way. You know that, we all know that. Running and hiding at some point, although we've all done it, at some point, it's not an option anymore. Question for you, have you reached that point? Are you hitting that point today? It may feel like it's hitting a wall, actually. And it may feel as though things are completely falling apart. It's all part of the spiritual process. And the mind can only serve. It should give you, I mean, it should give all of us great comfort, relief, satisfaction to know that we are in control. Nobody else can rule our own mind. No one else can decide for us. People can't wipe away our decision-making ability. We can attempt to give it to them, but we're not really because we're still making the decision. If you run and hide, you decline to choose. That's still a choice. You're choosing. No one else is choosing. No one else is choosing, so we ultimately discover here in the spiritual path that we can't blame anybody. We're in control. That should be comforting. In the end, I hope that you reach a point where that is comforting to know that you're running the show. You got to run the show. Nobody else is going to run it for you. So awakening is an adult endeavor, isn't it? Spirituality is very much for grown-ups, yeah. Now, even though you may have reached grown-up age in this lifetime, whether it's 30, 40, 50, 60, 103, whatever, are you acting grown-up spiritually? Are you owning everything. Are you taking responsibility? Do you, in fact, accept the idea that you're in control? Do you accept lesson 236? I rule my mind, which I alone must rule. And have you given it over to God? Have you given it over to the power in the universe, the only thing that actually exists? Have you given it over to run the show? To the ego, this feels like a ridiculous little bit of folly. And, if you, and when you persist with it, it seems like death to the ego. But again, let's all come back to the 
the fundamental summary of A Course in Miracles that nothing real can be threatened. Who you really are cannot be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Ego does not exist. It's just a mistake. It is just a mistake to be set aside, which in our practice of forgiveness means forgiving it. This is one of the stages we have to go through where we let go completely of our separate sense of self, a little less. Yeah. So each of us appears to be in a different place at a different point on this journey, but it's always worth asking yourself, have I accepted today's idea? Am I practicing today's idea? And indeed, have I given all of my experience over to God? Ultimately, we're told very explicitly here in A Course in Miracles that ultimately each and every one of us is going to do that. And we could save ourselves a lot of time and suffering, by the way, and do it today. Like right now, we could do this. You could do this. And do you choose to? Do you choose to? Yeah. So I just have to laugh because sometimes when I'm shooting a video here and speaking to, to all of you, there's a certain intensity that comes out, isn't there? I mean, <laughs> we've got to have some humor along with it and intense statements can and in my opinion, should be delivered with a smile on one's face, yeah? We've got to reach a point here where we laugh at the ridiculousness of our own crazy psychodrama. Because it's nuts, really. It's nuts. It's frantic, it's wild doesn't know which ends up, which ends down, doesn't know anything at all. How does it not know anything? It's not real, it doesn't exist. And the intensity that comes out here, I hope hits you in the right place, so to speak not in terms of an image of physical violence, but a spiritual hit, a connection, something that you get, yeah? You get a sense of urgency to practice. Because what we've got here in this lifetime is a beautiful opportunity. We've got an opportunity for forgiveness on a massive scale. It's being handed to us on a platter. We've simply to be aware of the opportunities and take those opportunities. And it takes intensity sometimes to pull us out of our drama. Doesn't it? I think about how many times you were dwelling on something and it took a shake, right? Or a smack, so to speak, from the universe to set you back on track again. So my job here is to simply turn the camera and microphone on and to teach. It's to speak to all of you. And I hope, of course, that you may be inspired that the action is 100% up to you because you rule your mind, which you alone must rule. 
So let's put some emphasis, shall we not, on the word must. Because if you truly want only the peace of God, you must give your mind over to God with nothing held back, no little hidden corners, no special forms of hatred, no parsed out little compartments of maintaining a grudge against somebody, but forgiving everybody else doesn't work that way. It's total or not at all. And what we're routinely and repeatedly told is that nothing real can be threatened. So if your offering is 100%, if it's out of love, if it's from a forgiving place, a joyful place, it's real. And it cannot be threatened. So I invite you to take this to heart as I invite you to take all of these lessons to heart. Because, well, you're watching it. It is important and you know that. That's the important thing here. This is not about my experience. It's about your experience, it's about you. All of this is about you. Remember, what we appear to see here in the world, supposedly outside of us, is really going on in our own minds. This question, what do you want to see? Violence and drama? Suffering? Pain, death, fear? Or do you want the peace of God? Which is it? All right, guys. Thank you, as always, for tuning in. And seriously, take this one to heart and really spend some time today contemplating this, that you alone must rule your own mind.